Well, welcome, Rachel Reed. Welcome to Based uh, the Podcast, and thanks for coming on today. We've we've had a chat during the week about some of the incredible work that you know you've been doing out there in the Air Peninsula. You're a mother of five, and you've had school age kids that uh, you know you've been witnessing things that have been happening in the education system that you're alarmed by, uh, and it's just an incredible story. I thought well, you told me about um, what you've been doing. I thought well, we've got a get you on and, and just sort of unpack it a little bit because uh, one of the things I've noticed is how many mums are getting involved politically and starting to do a lot of the heavy lifting here. So your story is a, a pretty amazing one, but do you want to tell us how it all came about, how, how you sort of developed this interest and this kind of blueprint for how to tackle these issues with the schools? Yeah, well, last year I was chatting with a dad who's on the governing council of my school and um, I had... I've had kids in school for about 18 years so far, never been a part of a governing council, just totally not interested. But I really felt like I needed to join this year or last year. Um, So I went along, joined up, and it was fairly uneventful until about May when the Director of Education came and and the principal's job was up for renewal. So um, she came and she said that we've got a new government, we've got a new curriculum and the landscape is very different to what it used to be and we need a principal who can take us to that landscape. So straight away I just thought the curriculum, like it, my ears just pricked up and I was like I need to have a look at this new curriculum. So I went home and started like looking at stuff online and reading you know, information, went to the, the curriculum itself and then followed the steps. And I was quite shocked at what I was reading. And I'll just, I can read a couple of bits to you. Um, yeah. It says, how can you, you could not teach about sexual consent, for example, unless you've also taught about sexual pleasure. So like talking about sexual pleasure, they're actually talking about like orgasms, right? So they're saying they need to teach mm. kids about orgasms. It- then and this is aimed at said, kids as young as as young as sort of you know year, year what year yeah. This is like the whole the curriculum goes from the age of three to year twelve. Obviously, they're not teaching three year olds yeah. about that, but the the ideology around it starts at at three years old. Then it says a need to address really positive things around sexuality and particularly issues like pleasure and how to be a good lover. So there's more in there than that, but those things are in, and this was written in like 2022, so it's pretty recent. So I went to the governing council and I said, has anyone here read this? Like the principal hadn't read it, no one had read it. I read those things out and they were kind of, you know, shocked and horrified and, you know, well, that's not that, like good. We're not teaching that. So, okay, so we, it settled down for a few months. Then a few months later I had... A couple of mums come to me and they said, our kids have just been told in sex ed class that they can change their gender with medication and surgery and that they could be a cow or dog if they wanted to be. So they were like, they were really upset. And they knew I'd already talked to governing council. So they said, could you come with us to a meeting with the principal and the teacher? And we said, yeah. I said, that's fine. So we went and talked to them. The teacher confessed that she had already taught the trans part of it, and then which was just moving on to puberty, which, by the way, is not the mandatory part of the sex ed program. <laughs> it's the like the bit that you don't have to do. The trans part is the part you have to do. So we asked in that meeting, can we have a read of the, the curriculum? Like, what are you showing them? And they said, no, you, you can't read it. You're not trained. So I said, well, how come you can show it to 10-year-olds, but you can't show it to us? because you haven't done the course. So you have to do a special two-day course to be able to have a look at this information. And that's true for teachers and the principal as well. So you actually have to, you can only read it if you've done their special course. So I said, well, could you do a parent information night? No. Could you send home a new letter, like explaining it, what you're going to be teaching? No. Like they just everything was a shutdown. They wouldn't do anything, so I decided to have my own parent night, and I opened it up to the whole Air Peninsula. We had a number of parents come from all around the place, and then we we ended up doing a second one because people wanted another one. But 
this, the newspaper got hold of like the fact that I had a parent night and um, they rang me and said, did you do this? I said, yeah. And I, I talked to them and I kind of freaked out because I was like, this could go so badly. <laughs> like, I don't know how it's going to be represented, but I just said, listen, they're keeping secrets from us. Like, why can't they show us what they're teaching their children? Like, that's not okay. And so when the newspaper article came out, it really shone a light on the school that they were keeping secrets. And it really got the whole Air Peninsula talking. And, um, and it's, you know, some of it was good, some of it wasn't good. Um, I went back to governing council and I said, this is not okay. You know, these parents have come and said this to me and they were furious with me. <laughs> they called me a troublemaker. They told me I was stirring the pot. Um, they said a lot of things. They were going to formally discipline me for going to the meeting with those mums uh, and send me to a respect course to retrain me. Uh, they, in their good graciousness, decided not to do that. And I don't know how they were going to enforce it, but that's what they told me. And they'd had official letters of complaint about me. Um, I ended up having another parent night and we had some plans this time. And so um, we decided to all write in to the school and to the principal because they're legally responsible for the students and, you know, the happenings of the school and I quoted the Royal Commission to them. So that's the Royal Commission into Institutional Sexual Abuse uh, that Julia Gillard did. And it talks in there about the importance of parental involvement and to keep a child safe, a parent needs to have open two-way communication with the school. They need to be able to speak into the policies and the governance of the school. Um, so it's like it really lays out this foundation that the parents are the primary caregivers and, and so they need to be involved. And so I quoted that in this letter to the board and Sam was reading it as well. Other parents did it too. One parent put something on social media and and said to the, the parents of the community, like, you've got to like, pull your kids out of this class. Um, and then another parent wrote an open letter to a number of people at the school and with all these questions and said, can you please answer this? You know, what, what are you doing? Um, so there was, a, there was a number of us who really kind of came together and, and put some pressure on and it really did make them feel uncomfortable. Um, so in the end, the school went to Sam, and the, the, our MP, and they were like, we know we, we know we haven't done things right we shouldn't have done some things the way we did and, you know, we're going to do it different next year. So he came and had a talk to me about that and um, he said, you know, they're, they're feeling uncomfortable. <laughs> um, this year they did do things a bit different. They did send out a letter with more details. Um, they did have a parent information night and they decided to go with an opt-in option, which was much better because... Um, at the moment, the curriculum is opt-out only. So every child is in unless the parent sends an email to the, the principal saying, I don't want my child to do this. So there's no consent form or anything. It just automatically happens. But what I would like to see is an opt-in option where the parents have to sign a consent form saying that they allow their child to participate in that program and have full, you know, full knowledge, full consent to what they're signing. And I, I just think that's fair enough. And I feel like that's common sense to, you know, know what you're agreeing to. Um, when some of the parents found out about this last year, they did take their kids out and those kids actually got sent to detention, which is not okay. <laughs> they're actually supposed to go to the library or, go, you know, have alternative arrangements where the child or children get looked after. But these kids actually got sent to detention and that was something I complained about as well because that's their the parents' choice. But they were made that a spectacle of really in front of the class and sent out. And it really it made, gave the kids anxiety. Like it really, it really shook them and they felt embarrassed in front of their class. And I just don't think that's right. <laughs> and they talk about bullying in this curriculum. And I'm like, well, 
Mm. What's that? You know, don't treat yeah. ten year olds like that. Um, so yeah, it's been a a big process, and and I, you know, I know they don't really like me, but at the end of the day, these my parents need to have the right to speak into this. Schools shouldn't be keeping secrets, and I think there's something that's just so important that we need to get across, and that is that sex talk, children and secrets just never belong together. They just never belong together because that's grooming. Do, do you feel as though, um, I mean, having having this having come to your attention, I mean, I, 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 do you feel as though there are a, a lot of parents out there that simply just understandably don't know what kids are being taught at school, including these sorts of lessons and and uh, and kind of programs that are, that are kids are going through. Do you, ha, do you think that's endemic from the parents that you speak to? Have many been shocked when you've, you've spoken to them? Totally, totally shocked. And some of them, I think, don't want to believe it because it kind of means they'd have to do something. But when they do realise what their ch- children are learning, they're totally, totally shocked because they do trust the teachers and they trust the school and they think, yeah. you know, they would never do that. But this is what the teachers are being trained to teach. And they have gone through it like a brainwashing program so that they kind of believe in it. Some teachers don't like it and, and they won't teach it, but mm. the ones that do, they've been, you know, they've like yeah, been brainwashed to think this is a really good idea. Now, I know they're showing videos in class of like there's a, a TED talk of a young 11-year-old girl who's transitioned to be a boy and is now no longer a boy. She's non-binary. Um, and she explains her process of transitioning. And then there's um, another part of the, the film that it has a lady saying, if anyone says anything to you that you don't agree with, cut them off. And I think, I think that's a really dangerous thing to say to young people. Mm-hmm. To say, you know, if anyone says anything you don't like, just cut them out of your life. Now, who is going to be the people, you know, saying something they don't want to hear? The parents. Mm. And I don't think we want to, you know, put a wedge between children and their parents. But that's what's part of this video. So, you know, they talk about transitioning and all of that stuff and then say, you know, if someone says something you don't like to hear, just shut them out. Mm. This is two 12 year olds, this video. I just think it's it's dangerous. And, and in terms of the when you've um, you know raised this issue with parents and they've they've started uh, started understanding more, you're finding that you know you're now seeing parents getting more active in, in, in their uh, in their schooling and, and more active generally in, in terms of the pushback because that's what we're noticing here in Adelaide. We've seen quite a significant influx of, of mums who are worried about the education system generally, not just the, some of this sort of teaching, but also just the standards and uh, the, the general indoctrination as well. Um, is, is that the experience over there? Is it, has it been quite a big movement on the Air Peninsula? I think so. And it's not just the little school that I'm at. There's other schools. I'm talking to parents from all over, like all different schools, and they're calling me and saying, what, how do I approach the school? And um, yeah. that the first thing I would I would say to people is just ask to see the curriculum. Like, just you don't have to go in all guns blazing, straight up. Just say, you know, is it okay if I have a look at the, you know, the actual lesson plan, um, what you've got written down, um, and then if they don't show you, then you go, okay, well, there's a problem here because we've got secrets. Um, and I have had a friend who she went to her, her Catholic school and asked for the curriculum and the teacher sent everything through and I had a look at it and, you know, they had actually said to her, we're not talking about gender until senior school. And so I went through all the information she sent me and I sent stuff back to her and I said, they are talking about gender, have a read through this have a watch and she went back to the teacher and said I don't feel comfortable with this you are talking about it and the teacher said actually you're right (laughs) we are so you kind of can't take anything at face value you have to lay eyes on it yourself you have to see it for yourself to know the truth because 
there are so many lies and I hate to say that I hate it because they're the teachers you know you want to trust them but hmm. my experience is talking to parents all over South Australia is that they're just lying and lying and lying so it's time for mums and dads to take this into their own hands because we're the ones that need to stand up for our children we're the ones dealing with the teachers and the school we can take them out of the class it's on us and we want to i want to work with the government obviously to change you know some policies and all of that stuff that's not good but when it comes down to it it's the mums and dads who need to stand up for their children and who to say actually i'm going to pull my child out of that class i'm going to talk to your teacher I'm not going to allow these things to just happen to you. One of the things that I've noticed actually, like in doing all this, the parents started talking to their kids about what they were learning and how they felt about it. And the kids aren't, they're not coping very well with it. So we've got mm. kids feeling sick in class, like they're wanting to throw up, wanting to faint. We've got kids who don't want to be taken to school that day because they don't want to go to that class or they're really naughty so they get kicked out and they don't have to listen to it. There's children laying in bed at you know midnight going, Mum, I'm worried that when I get older, I'm not going to know who I'm married to. Am I going to be married to a boy or a girl? How will I know? Ten-year-olds shouldn't worry about that. That's They should just be playing soccer and, and riding their bikes. They shouldn't be laying in bed worrying about, you know, if they know they're going to be married to a boy or a girl. So the kids themselves aren't really coping with it and they don't know how to say it. Like, they don't have the words for it. Um, but and one, one boy said to his mum, mum, I can't repeat what I've heard because I never wanted to hear it in the first place. So I think from the kids' point of view, like, they're not... They're not coping with it. Yeah. And parents come to you now, uh, you know, routinely, I think, because you've been through this experience and you've sort of shown how things can be done. You're having to have blaze that, that path yourself, in effect. But what, what are the sorts of things, what are, what are maybe the top five things you say to parents when they, when they say, I'm worried about what my kids are being taught, um, noting that they shouldn't have to go through that process, but given where we're up to, uh, yeah. what, you know, what do you tell them to do? I think the very first thing to do is to opt the kids out of the class. That's the, like, it's a really pervasive curriculum. So it does, it goes into English and history and biology and all of that. But the explicit stuff is really in the sex ed class. So opt them out. Get the teachers to find an alternative, whether that's PE or art or library or whatever. So you don't have to do it. You can opt your child out. Um, secondly, I think get involved at your school. Like, join the governing council, start speaking into the life of the school and standing up for what you believe. And surprisingly, you know, there are other parents who feel the same way. You need to find them. Um, if you go and talk to your school, do probably take someone with you, even if it's your spouse. Um, but just don't go alone to talk to them. Um, you need to talk to the health teacher because this is in um, health and PE. Um, and, and you can talk to the principal as well and say, you know, can I have a look at the curriculum? Um, and then if they don't, if they won't show it to you, then you can write a letter to the board um, and the principal and then, like, talk to your MP as well. And then see, you can CC in anyone. Like, you can CC in a whole stack of MPs and there's a, there's a stack of people that would be in favour um, and would, would have want to help you with that um so but talk to your local mp as well or find out where they stand with it and um and i find having a someone cc'd in just shows the school that other people are looking at this uh, it's not just a conversation between the parent and the school but it's it's a bigger issue and that sort of puts a bit more weight behind what you're saying i i feel um and you know Talk to other parents and mm. rally up a group because we did it together. Like we, you know, there was a number of us all asking different questions and coming at it from a different angle and and, and saying different stuff. And that's when the school really started going, oh, like we don't, we're not enjoying this. 
Um, so, yeah, talk to other mums and dads. I think that's a really important one, that last one, being involved and being involved with other numbers. I mean, my experience from this has been that so many mums, we, we're contacted all the time, and dads and grandparents are so worried about this and what kids are being taught and exposed to. But, you know, often they don't want to talk to their neighbour about it because they don't want to be seen to be, you know, labelled with a name, they'll be called a name. Um, and yet there are so many people out there that agree, forming groups and getting like-minded people together um, is such an important step. I just think that's that's spot on. And have you been able to, um, you know, sort of impart that onto other people around the state? And have they been have they been listening and doing it from where you sit? Yeah, I totally think that. I've actually been going around South Australia doing <clears throat> parent information nights, and just I've gone sort of back into the history of it, just so they can see it's like it's a global thing. It goes global, national, state, local, and it sort of you know filters its way down. Um, and it, you know that it's in the country, it's in the city, it's it's everywhere because ideologies aren't contained by locations. And in this day and age, you know that it's everywhere. So people kind of have thought, oh, you know, we live in the country, that won't, you know, that won't be happening here. That's absolutely not true. It is totally happening in the country. So I've been travelling around South Australia, talking particularly to parents in the country about how to go and talk to the school and, you know, try and put some pressure on. Well, I mean, I just think it's a, it's a it's just an inspirational story. And I just think, you know, the fact that it's, you know, these things often start with one person, you know, and I, mm -hmm. and I say in politics with mums as well, mums shape the, the battlefield of politics in my view. And, and I think you're, you're showing that straight away. I, I just think it's a real credit to you. And um, hopefully, you know, parents can, who are listening to this can take some inspiration from that. Is there... Is there somewhere where they can, you know, follow you and follow what you're doing uh, in social media or somewhere like that where they can sort of learn from what you've had to do in terms of, uh, you know, getting it, getting it sort of blasting through the early stages of it? Yeah, I've got a Facebook page and it's called Parents for Safe Kids. Um, and I just put up lots of information about, and I've got some documents and stuff up there. I've got the Royal Commission, I've got some policies um, and, you know, so you can access those. Um, and I do put lots of current, you know, things that are happening in regards to this area, um, education and parental rights. Um, the other ones that you can follow are like Guardians, South Australia, that's huge. Um, and uh, In Defence of Children are really good as well. So that there's some, yeah. like yeah. if you're wanting to meet people and get like a support network around you, um, those yeah. three Facebook pages will be good. I think that's just so important, and I just think you know it's it's a real credit to you and others. I mean, there are there are people all around the state, and I know all around Australia as well that are yes. that are sort of dealing with the same issues. And uh, so, look, thank you so much for for what you're doing and for the work you're putting in to sort of make so that other parents don't have to battle their way through it so much. And you know, it's a it's a really uh, it's a really good thing. And and thanks for taking the time to come on and and uh, share it with everyone out there. Hopefully, people. Um, log on and follow you and, uh, and get some tips from, from where you've been. So thanks so much and, um, yeah, I look forward to following your progress. Oh, thank you. Thanks for, like, having a chat about it and um, getting the <laughs> message out. It's so important. <laughs> it's great. It's great. No, and much appreciated and thanks again and uh, we'll be sure to watch from a, from a distance with admiration. <laughs> thank you.